Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Kim Barrett Show. I am your host, Kim Barrett, and on today's episode we have Mr. Michael Bryan talking about his amazing new book coming out, uh, which is now out at the release of this episode. It's all about how can you be effective and put yourself out there if you're an introvert. If you're someone who's not super confident on camera, how can you actually put yourself out there, make more impact and leverage yourself if you're maybe a little bit shy, you're a little bit introverted if you want to call it that. So if you're someone who considers yourself an introvert, this is an episode you do not want to miss. Or if you're an extrovert and want to see about what all our, us introverts are so worried about, you want to check it out as well. Of course, if we can help you with your marketing and get you out there more, then head over to marketingmogul.com.au or we've got your back. But until then, let's jump into the show. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today, mate. Really appreciate you making the time. Yeah, no problem, Kev. It's been a long time coming. I know we've been connected for a while. Yeah, no, that's it. And it's uh, good to finally make this happen. So I always like to ask this question at the start of my podcast, same question to everyone, which is if you and I met at a party and we were having a chat and we're like, and I was chatting to you and I was like, Michael, what is it that you actually do? What's your go-to answer? My go-to answer is, it's a difficult one because when you do a lot of things, you start to have like four or five different ways of calling yourself and it can get pretty confusing. But one of the, the main things that I, I do say to people is I help people be okay in the spotlight. And what I mean by that is so many people think they have to change to put themselves out there. They're going to be someone that they're not. And my job is to help them understand that they don't have to change. They may have to improve certain things or be sort of a different version of themselves and turn a dial up in a certain way. Um, but that's still just a more complex version of, of who they are. You know, they don't have to feel like it's any different. So that's what I help people do. But in terms of like meeting us at a party and you don't want all the social awkwardness of, I don't know what that is. Uh, I mostly just say that I'm, I'm a business owner, and I'm an author, and then more often than not, they ask me what the book is. But uh, aside from that, m m most people generally struggle with the whole like the, the entrepreneurial discussion at parties anyway. Yeah, no, 100%. Pretty much like 99% of the people say that. And they're like, do you want my, the, the real thing if I was networking with someone? Or do you want my like fake one that I give people? And it's like, you know, yeah, I, I invented the internet or something like that just to try and make it a bit more fun. So it's uh, you're, you're, you're not alone in that, uh, in that side, that's for sure. So tell me, obviously, if people ask you about the, the book, do you reckon that is that an easier bite-sized piece for people? What do they normally ask you? And what's the what's the answer on the side if you go, cool, and I'm an author? And they go, all right, well, tell me about your book. What's the abridged version of that? The abridged version of that is it's a storybook where I share my story and the lessons that are involved, but I tell it from an inside the mind perspective. So rather than just give people like the to-do list of what I've done and how I've done it. I share like what I was feeling, what was going through my mind, what did I have to do to be able to do the things that I've done, things like speaking on stage for the first time. I don't say like I had the to-do list and I had all that. I share the fact that I, I didn't particularly enjoy my first time on stage. I was a nervous wreck. And I share like what I was telling myself the fact that I had to convince myself to get off the chair when my name was called out, the fact my legs went really, really heavy as I walked up the stairs. I shared those kinds of things rather than what my talk was about. Because I think so many people see the successes of what people have done. They very rarely know what goes on behind the scenes. It's, it's so true. And I think... That that's to me, I think sometimes is a, is a better way of than rather than just hearing like here's your checklist of things to do to prepare yourself for a speech or to be in the spotlight or whatever it might be. 
it's so much better to hear inside because most people are dealing with that exact same thing, right? They they have those thoughts, they have those things, and it's just like, well, it, it just makes so much of a better connection for them, I think. So kudos on that side. Now, like, what are the, obviously that you work with people and you do help them get ready for that spotlight. What's the number one thing that you find people are dealing with when it comes to, you know, not wanting to be in the spotlight or kind of being nervous around or whatever it might be for people? What's the biggest thing that you come across that, people suffer from that kind of holds them back from doing it? I think if you go all the way to how deep we can take it, it's things like judgment. It's things like not knowing who they are. So they take other people's judgments as their own. And then that causes the ripple effect of trying to please people, worrying what people think, and all the things that we tend to associate with People that are performers or entrepreneurs or speakers or influencers, they they start with the I worry about what people think. No matter they whether they really do or whether they've just heard it and think that's me, and then they take it on as as, as their own sort of situation. You know, that's that's different from person to person. But one of the things that I've noticed is the more self-aware that you are, the less this actually impacts your decisions. So if you know who you are when you're on stage, I'm not a wavy, jumping around, bouncing on stage kind of person. If I tried to be that, I'd be more fearful. I'd be more worried about what they thought, trying to go and be somebody different rather than just walking on stage and being myself. It's a very different style of speaking different style of performing but sometimes you just got to be okay with the fact that you're not the same as everybody else and okay with the fact that you can be different and still get the opportunities that you want sometimes that's what people can struggle with as well if you think about it you see people getting the opportunities and they act a certain way they are a certain type of person And then people instantly think, well, in order to get that, I need to be this way. I need to be the same as them. I need to be just like them if I'm going to get the same opportunities as them. And that's this kind of goes against the old way of like you hire a mentor to do what they've done, if that makes sense. But you've got to realize that you're not the same as them. Everyone's different. Everyone's unique in in their own way and that's why the results do tend to differ even from people that you're learning from because you're not the same person you can't show up you can't wear a mask and be identical to them right so i think someone's ability to take the masks off and take the layers off and be unique you know be themselves there is a trade-off because some people you just won't be a fit for some opportunities want a particular kind of person and that's okay. You've got to be okay with getting the things that suit you and not getting the things that don't rather than chasing the thing that you've got to change who you are as a person just to get that thing. It's amazing how many people are actually unfulfilled after that as well. They get it. And then about a couple of days later, they're back to, they're back to sort of their, themselves right after that but then they've got the opportunity to put themselves in the public eye in that way there's that pressure then to keep doing that because you've got the consistency element so you're consistently out there or are you consistently being fake and you've got to be like fake and then retreat back into who you actually are and then be somebody different and then be who you actually are so you start wearing this mask and being this persona publicly once you've started. It's very hard to understand that it's difficult. And that's why celebrities struggle sometimes. That's why you see people that achieve things but aren't actually happy. It's because they've achieved things that are relevant to the person they're trying to be rather than who they actually are. Uh, yeah, I you know only wholeheartedly agree. And what's your viewpoint? Because I mean, there's a certain style of, especially when it comes to speaking, that I see where people might go and see the likes of Gary V or something like that, 
and where the dude is obviously like a lot of the time is like high pressure, not like pressure, but it's like he's, he's got intensity and he also swears a lot. And then people kind of, and I, like, to be honest, like I don't really know that many people that's like every second word is a swear word, but I see people when they're looking to go, try and like grow on Instagram or people and they're trying to be, if you want to call it an influencer or people that try and speak. And sometimes they try and have this like a similar uh, vibe to someone like that because obviously they see and they're like, oh, well, you know, Gary V gets, you know, wherever it might be, 100, 150K for a keynote, sometimes more, first class flights, all this sort of stuff. And they go, I'm going to like, you know, they want that. They maybe want to try and be jarring like him. How do you see when there's people like that out there? What influence do you think that actually has on when when people come through and you're like, well, you know, as you mentioned before, trying to help them find their own style? Do you, does that do people adopt, obviously, not just the personality traits, but also almost like the language traits where sometimes it might be cool, swear a lot or don't swear at all, things like that. How do you see that kind of play out? I think there's there's a fine line between being authentic and then trying too hard because you've seen it work somewhere else. And the reason why I say that is because if you swear a little bit, behind closed doors that's fine you know so I, I let the odd swear word slip out right if i've had a bit a little bit too much to drink or I'm a bit hyper or something irritates me you know I, I let the odd one slip out here and there i don't do it in the public domain because in my mind it proves that i've not thought things through like they've got this thing where it's a little shortcut and a filler for a sentence or something that's just my view on it that's just how it's how I am as a person, right? Where someone that's like, well, I want to swear online because it's a pattern interrupt for people, which it is. You know, people swear a lot. It interrupts your sort of train of thought and you've got to re-catch up and re-engage with the content, which is why it tends to work. If you do that and that's what you want to do, then I've got no issues with it. The issue that I've noticed is you can be punchy, you can be entertaining, you can be intense, I guess, without doing that. You know, I've, I've recorded the same thing four times, and each time, the length of time of the video has gotten shorter, meaning it's more refined, it's punchier, I'm clearer on my thought process. I get to the point sooner. It's like a two minute video can become a 45 second video just because of my style, editing my words essentially. And the more you do it, the better you get. So your answers are naturally going to form clearer the more you do it. That's not me being a different person. That's me being more refined, clear, and getting to the point a little bit sooner comes across as more intense or sharper and I think that that that's the difference is trying to put it on as such or just being clearer more refined and a bit more intense and getting your message across in a shorter space of time that tends to be the difference are you trying to force it or are you just clearer and trying to be communicating things in a, in a shorter space of time mm -hmm. I think that's so, that's so true. The more that you practice it, the more that you refine it, it gets better. And as you said, you can say it in just a few, just a few words. You know, and sometimes it's like you say you can take something from a minute to thirty seconds to fifteen. And so you know, it, it it does happen with the more that you practice, the more that you refine. And as I wholeheartedly agree, because I see some people, and I'm like, yeah, they are using you know uh, swear words or certain style that they do as as fill as filler, and it just you know, and you can kind of tell, but. I think that's probably not necessarily everyone, but people that probably see and hear a lot of people speak like yourself would. Like I see every, so many people, especially from, um, from podcasting and whatnot too, and it's just always interesting to see. Now, what about someone if they're going, okay, cool, number one, they need to get clear on who they are, their personality, their style, to go out there and be in the spotlight. What are some of the first steps that they can do? So if someone's going, cool, maybe that's me. I've been in my own head. I've been overthinking things too much and trying to maybe think that I've got to be, you know, maybe like Michael, like, like Gary Vee, like someone else I've got to try and emulate their style. And now they're going, okay, I know that I can use to be myself and use my style. What are some of the things that they can do to in, enhance that experience to, to make it a little bit easier for themselves? I think when it comes to things like podcasts or videos or content creation, or even if you're in magazines and things of that nature, 
is you've got to work with what's available to you right now. Then like when I first started, I, I realized that video was going to be a big thing. And this was back when my business first started. We're talking like more than five years ago now. I thought, oh, there's YouTube. Facebook was being more visible. Um, I was watching Snapchat, even though that's not as popular now. And I thought, I hate it. But video is the way to go. And I'd never, I'd never been on camera. I wasn't a camera person. I was camera shy, for want of a better expression. And I put that in the, I am bad at it, but I'm going to improve on it category. So I had like, okay, I can write. And I didn't even like taking pictures, Kip, to be perfectly honest. I didn't like, you know, the family photos. It was like, oh, go on then. You know, it was, I had to force the family stuff, never mind like social media pictures. So that again, that was in the get used to it. I had very little in the, I'm going to do this. And this is my starting point. And I had a lot (laughs) in the, this is the bracket of, I'm going to improve on this. I'm going to get better at this. And it's going to be bad at first, very bad at first. And I just have to be okay with the learning curve as well. Same thing with, with, with kind of podcasting as well. When you first start, you're not great. I'm probably still not in the amazing category as it is. But what what I had to realize was as an introvert, I've got things that I'm good at and I've got things that I'm particularly bad at. Now, I'm better at them now, which is great. But if you're someone that's new to this, use what you've got right now and put together a program, if you will, of improving at the other aspects. Now, the reason why I say that is because if you're not good at all on camera, unfortunately, I don't particularly enjoy this either. So you're not alone. But the world is becoming more and more and more visual. And there's, there's an element of just going with the way the world is going. You can either follow the trend of the way the world likes to consume media and content and all those things, or you can stick with things like blogging, writing, doing your thing without being on camera. You do run the risk of limiting yourself. You do run the risk of not sort of leaving behind, not being left behind, because there are bloggers out there that still do really well, but not many people read blogs. Not many people read books. Not many people do the thing that you're doing. So you've got to accept your sort of limitations, accept that you're not going to do these things like video, live streaming, podcasting, all those things. But you've got to accept that only a certain amount of people are going to actually see you. So at the time, I didn't want to limit myself. I thought that the pain of getting better at these things and the growth that I would go on, the transformation that I'd have as a person was more important than me just sticking with writing and writing. Because at the time came, I didn't even write Facebook posts. I was like scrolling through social media and that was it. I didn't do any social media before I started my business. I probably wouldn't do a lot of social media if I didn't have a business. So with that in mind, you've got to realize, okay, this is the way it is now. Use what you can, but develop in the ways that you want to develop it. And I hated it. You know, I did like 50 videos before I released my first one. And I hated all 50, but I just thought, oh, I've got to, I'm going to take the leap sometime. You know, there's a difference between private stuff and public stuff. Difference between putting a video in a private Facebook group with everyone that knows who you are and then doing a live stream on Twitter where the whole planet could potentially see it. It's a very different situation and a very different mindset that you would need to be able to do those things. And you've got to be, again, going back to what I said before, 
comfortable in yourself to be able to do it. But there's an element of building the skill because confidence through competence is a real thing. It's a real thing. So you can only go so far like inside your own head before you realize that sometimes I just have to do it often enough, get better at it, and that will itself sort of fuel my confidence in it. Yeah, 100% agree with that. And um, I think that's it. It's the it's the reps. You've got to get reps in. It's like every you know every expert was once a beginner, and that's all across every platform. So you you've got to get the reps in if you if you want to be committed to it. Now, obviously, you mentioned writing, and you mentioned the book, and the your book is about to be released on the nineteenth of November. Give, obviously, you told us a little bit about it earlier, but tell us tell us a little bit more. Tell us like what what can people expect if they check the book out? Well, inside the book, you learn a lot about me as a person as well because you've got to set the scene a little bit so if no one knows who I am all of the stuff in advance of that doesn't make as much sense it will be helpful don't get me wrong but I share my story all about having health conditions and losing one of my friends that had the conditions before I was diagnosed and how that triggered a sense of wanting to not regret my future, because he was only a year older than I was. So I asked the question of, if I only had a year left, how would I spend my time? What would I do? And you learn all of that. You learn what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. You learn what it took for me to be on stage, host my own show, win awards, doing a lot of the things that I wouldn't even have dreamt of doing. I wanted... I wanted to live in a way that gave other people permission to live their own life as well. Because when I was a personal trainer, my clients found out I had the conditions. I kept them at bay, you know, like I don't want to tell people because people have this filter and they automatically make my life easier. I I didn't want that. I wanted to be normal, right? And when they found out, they realized that (laughs) their excuses didn't really matter that much. So they got better results. I felt happier. They encouraged me to share my story more. And that's the journey that I went on. So being on stage was the result of my clients telling me to share my message more. And that was the first thing I came to. It was, okay, what's the best version of that? Speaking to people on stage. And I thought, oh, God, here we go. I've got to actually be on stage. This is new, you know? So that's what I take people through. It's an inside-the-mind perspective of doing things I never thought that I could, doing things for the first time, and essentially the journey of acting scared. Because when you do things for the first time, you've got the fear of the unknown. As someone that's always felt that they weren't good enough, and someone that was quiet, and someone that was very sort of internal, I'm inside my head quite a bit, and you learn all about that, you learn what it's like, and one of the the people that managed to get a book just before it came out said that they actually feel a bit more hopeful, because if I did it going through all of the emotions and all of the negativity that I felt while I was doing it, they actually stopped doing certain things before they got to that point. But after they read the book, they realized they can push a little bit more and still follow through and get to the other side because there's another level. There's another level of discomfort that they can get through because I got through it and they feel hopeful and they just understood that there is a level that they've accepted as like a ceiling for how much struggle they can go through. And after they read the book, that grew. And they realized they could actually take on more struggle and actually achieve more because of it. And that made me feel really good, to be honest. It made me feel really uh, a real sense of I'm on the right journey. I'm on the right path myself. And if documenting it and sharing that side of it is enough for people to change how they do things, then the book's done its job and so have I. Amazing. 
And we'll share, and obviously for everyone listening, we'll share links and everything like that so that they can check it out. And we'll touch on that in just a sec as well. But and I always like to ask one question as we get towards the end of our time together here today, is is there a question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Ooh. Admittedly, this is the first time someone's asked it. So this is probably one of the questions that you could have asked but didn't ask, but you did ask. One of the things that did come to my mind was were they leaps that I took or were they small steps? My answer there is behind the scenes, it feels like small steps because you've got to do so much just to organize yourself, prepare yourself and all those things. It can feel like a little step each time because you've still got a to-do list. You've still got things to plan, things to organize, preparing for the future, all that sort of stuff. But then on the day when you're taking the action, that still feels like a leap. So it's a combination. It's when you're afraid of doing something, you do all the preparation, all the little nuts and bolts have to be right, but you still got to follow through with it. So no matter how much mental and physical preparation that you do, it's like you feel like there are only little steps, you know? You still got to take the leap and still follow through. And that follow through is the leap. That follow through is like going over the top. And you've got to run to the other side. No no matter how much preparation that you do before you go over, it's still, you still realize just how much of a chasm that sort of follow through is. Yeah, that, that, that would be, that would be my answer to that. I love that. And now what's the, as I said, we'll we'll link everything up for everyone if they want to go and check out the book. Is there a specific website or anything as well that's best for people to go and check out to find out a little bit more about yourself and or even to connect with you? Yeah, well, you can find me on on social media, which is at the Michael Bryan. So that's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The book is on Amazon. Um, so wherever you wherever you're listening, country wise, it's on Amazon. And yeah, the book is my introvert journey to be invisible, and I'm very proud of the book as well because of the feedback more than anything. You know, if I just wrote it. And no one really liked it. I'd feel differently about the book than if I got the feedback. And, you know, one of the people that read the book said, it's a roller coaster. I laughed, smiled and cried in a weekend. And it was like, whoa, that's a bit, that's a bit intense. And he went, yeah, it is fairly intense. You did a really good job. So that, that made me feel good because you don't know how good it is until it's done. You know, people say, oh, that sounded really good while they're writing it. You don't know. You don't know because you, you're the person living it. You're the person writing it. You've got that filter. But having readers say how good the book is, it made me feel like the book was, was worth it because it's valuable for people. Amazing. So, guys, wherever you're listening to this or, re- or watching this, scroll up into the show notes and we'll have links there to Amazon so you can check it all out and links to connect with Michael as well if you want to. And if you know anyone that maybe has been hesitating about getting themselves into the spotlight, or maybe they, they're ready to go, but they haven't made that, that step or that leap, then please do share this episode with them. We'd love for you to share this episode so people can hear more about Michael, his story, his journey. And, and if it can help someone and help them get, take that step to getting into the spotlight, then that would be amazing as well. So, Michael, thank you again so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you making the time. Yeah, my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Doug. Cheers.